uh, we are thinking in other process how to call this discussion at the very end. He suggested uh, the following title, what would be the offspring of the marriage of uh, theology and logic. Uh, but I, I, I counter it with the following uh, yeah. title. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's, that's also my idea. I, I would like to counter with the, uh, with the title Matrimonium Necessus and Sed Non Consumat. Necessary. I always make a mistake. So, uh, uh, in order to, to summarize it, I think that there are three slogans that quite well describe what we've been trying to do uh, for the last two days. The first is logic of, of theology. And here we have contributions by Professor Wolenski, Professor Lambert, uh, Father Professor Struek, uh, and others. Uh, and there are two questions here, really. First, is it possible at all to use logic in theology? And it seems that even from an atheist point of view, uh, it, it is possible. But then uh, the question arises, what logic is that? What logic is suitable for theology? And one answer is that it is only the classical logic, uh, but there are also proposals that we may use paraconsistent logic, the feasible logic, and other kinds of logic. So the first big question I would like to pose here is, what is the logic of theology? Should we be monists? claiming that there is only one logic applicable to theological discourse, or should we rather be pluralists saying that different aspects of that discourse should be modeled with different kinds of logic? The second slogan I propose is logic in theology. Uh, and uh, here we uh, had contributions by uh, Father Casalis, Professor Wojcik, uh, Professor Grigel, uh, and others. And uh, I have to say that it is quite difficult to uh, encapsulate the slogan into some uh, questions. But, for instance, uh, we can ask how to model theological concepts. Uh, or uh, we, can, we can ask uh, what is the difference between modeling uh, theological concepts and using some metaphors within theological discourse. Uh, or more generally, and this is my second big question, what uh, are the structural peculiar, peculiar, peculiarities of theology. Uh, finally, the third slogan would be theolo theology of logic. Uh, I recall uh, a recollection by uh, Bohensky, who in the 1930s uh, visited Lukasiewicz. Uh, and Lukasiewicz showed him a, a piece of paper on which there was a very complex uh, uh, formula written in Polish notation. So a, a lot of C's and, uh, and K's at the very beginning. And it was extremely, it was extremely long, like 50 or more symbols. Uh, and Lukasiewicz uh, uh, showed it to, to Bohensky and said, Look, father, how beautiful and how obviously true that is. How <laughs> 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 Uh, and so, <laughs> uh, so uh, and here is the contribution of, of, of Kim Sol In, who uh, uh, tried to show us that mathematics and logic uh, can be seen from three different perspectives. Mathematics or logic as magic, mathematics or logic as science proper, and mathematics and logic as means or object of contemplation. Uh, this, of course, brings to mind uh, the Leibnizian stand, stance that, in a way, simplifying a bit, God is logic. So my question here, and this is the third question for, for the discussion, is that, does logic have a theological value? Uh, and I open the discussion and welcome any comments. Okay, so first is if a theology uh, is to be a, an academic field, so there are no restrictions in using logic. So every logic, if uh, is proved to be fruitful form, 
analyzing some theoretical question, questions should be admitted. There is no, no reason in order to say that classical logic is preferred. This is one point. But uh, uh, as a person who observes theology from outside, so it depends which theology, uh, because specialists are not, uh, there is no, no agreement, no common agreement. These are very, very respected <coughs> philosophers of, of the FAS, for example, pro propose negative theology. Uh, this thing can be, of course, settled by authority. However, as far as I know, it is not. Because there is a tendency, there are recommendations, this theology, theologians are better than other. However, nobody tried to uh, reject by authority, for example, uh, views of uh, Nikolai of, of, of Cusan, Cusanus, or, or, or other people who, who, who think not standard. So, as far as I as far as I understand, is no. The magisterium, church magisterium, the Catholic theology, doesn't prevent such such solutions. So, for example, paraconsistent logic is proper maybe for analysis of such such views. So, at least from external point of view, I, I see no reasons to 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 take a priori. Answer. However, one of course can argue that classical logic is simplest so, and is God's logic because God must be simple. However, it would be a kind of arrogance, I guess, to decide which logic is used by God. Even, you know, in my neutral model. So, can impose several, uh, several denominations. For us, it is unclear which logic is used by God. For example, uh, uh, Jerzy Pejanowski and also Bogusław Wolniewicz, two very respected Polish philosophers, say that God calculates empirically. For, 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 for him, necessity is something like for us finite uh, sets. Uh, so, so and, you know, calculating, effectively cal calculating with infinity is another, you know, possibility to. You have mentioned negative theories. I have a question only, I have no answer. Could uh, analogic be applied to negative theology? Of course, not to the content of, of that theology, but perhaps or to the way of doing that. Okay. Or, or to define what does it mean, negative theology. Some, some theological negation factor or something like that. <laughs> it's a question to everybody. Is it, is it negative? No, but I think theology open for analogic? Yeah, but uh, as far as I understand apophantic theology does not resign from some positive denominations. No, so, if so. Well, uh, yeah, I can answer partially my question that negative theology is, uh, has to be formulated in, uh, in a certain language. And if so, we can apply logic to that language, mm -hmm. at least mm -hmm. in this sense. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, and always, always, even even if it is uh, negative theology, it use, uses the just uh, the classical logic mm -hmm. in this. Yes, uh, soft maybe Cusanus, but uh, the, the 
theology, about the theology of East, uh, uh, the East, Eastern theology. I think it, 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 it uses, I, I, never, I never analyzed that from that, this point of view. But uh, when, we, when, we read, when we read, for example, um, uh, Abdul Kimov or uh, the, the theologian like, like, like he, there is, there, is, there is just this logic, logic this classical logic. But maybe yeah. we, we need some, in, for negative theology, we need some kind of uh, theory which is showing its own limits or uh, some kind of incompleteness. You can use classical uh, logic but uh, focused on, on the limits, on what you cannot say po positively if you want. There is some kind of shadow of <laughs> ignorance but, but proved by the system itself, kind, kind of opening of the system. Maybe, maybe negative theology uh, needs some incompleteness results, if you want. Uh, but I think that more, more than, than, than the, the question is not, uh, not so, so, uh, so, so much as, as negative theology, but in the, in the uh, Catholic theology, in the Italian theology, there are the questions, there are some questions, some problems, uh, which could be resolved just by the para, para, consistent. Uh, para consistent. Because, for example, uh, I was very touched by, by the by the your observation. For example, in the in a, in a, in a formulation from uh, from a uh, synod of Toledo, there is an there is an expression that the son is begotten is begotten. That is the, the, the process of of be, being begotten finished. And that at the same time, is he is being begotten. Mm -hmm. So that that that, that the process that the process of of um, uh, no, of getting son is is all, is still continuing. Mm -hmm. So that we have that we have a, con a con concept of of a, a, a very dynamic relation between uh, son and uh, father and son. And thus, it, it, it is not it is not the, the classical logic, mm -hmm. but because they did not tell you on that too. But in this case, this case, it, it seems that it, it, it is so formulated, and and it, it, this is the mystery of of, of, of the Trinity. The mm -hmm. Son is para consistently generated by the Son. Mm -hmm. by the yeah. <laughs> yes, but, uh, yes. But why not? Why not? Why not? But in theology, you have the, the same. Uh, problem with some uh, re retroactive action of of the grace. For for example, when when we are speaking and when the liturgy are speaking, he is speaking about uh, Mary and uh, uh, Immaculate Conception. Uh, the the Church is speaking about a kind of retroactive grace. Uh, the the death of the Christ is retroactively. Yes give some property to Mary. Yes, yes. And this can be interpreted like a kind of tension because it is now, at the, at the, it is not now, it is in the, it is, uh, you know, the yeah, temporality yeah. can induce in theology some kind of, of contradiction which cannot be managed by usual uh, classical yes. reasoning. So, so we, have, we, have, we have here two questions, of, uh, two, two questions to, to consider. Uh, one is, what is the contradiction really? Mm -hmm. But now that we discuss not this this question, but the the, the, the problem, the question you you uh, mentioned here, uh, this this problem uh, is, is resolved uh, by uh, we resolve this in the theology, uh, uh, no, uh, pointing pointing the, uh, the, 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 the the fact the fact that the, uh, this formulation is made in the um, for, for uh, in the time, mm -hmm. uh, the acting of God is out, uh, out, um, over the time, yeah. over the time. the time, and so the, the the historical act of redemption on the cross is is an is in a historical event, mm -hmm. but but uh, his consequences mm -hmm. uh, are going beyond the time, mm -hmm. so that we we. we uh, from from this point of view, from from, from the from the eternal point of view, mm -hmm. there is no there is no there is no contradiction. No, no, of course, of course, yeah. this is a kind of application of some paraconsistent uh, system. When at at our scale, at our level, 
there are some contradictions in our language, but these contradictions are reconciliated at, yes. at the level yes. of, yeah. uh, of God, if you want, from, from the point of view of uh, eternity and, and of God. Exactly, exactly. So we have, we have to, 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 to uh, pass from one level to, to another level uh, a little bit yeah. higher. Yeah. And, and then it is possible to use one logic describing our way of thinking, which is not uh, identified with the, the, the logic of God, if you want. Of, the, the, the analogy, I, can, I, I think, he would, he, we, we, we could refer to the analogy of the uh, uh, time, uh, space-time. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, some problems of, of, of physics, uh, uh, no, uh, uh, couldn't be resolved without, uh, without uh, 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 taking in consideration the, the, the fourth uh, dimension, the time. So maybe maybe uh, maybe the, the, the logic the logic needs or, or the logic have a, 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 a third dimension. You, you you mentioned the problem of contradiction in theology. I once discussed with Russian theologians, Orthodox uh, uh, people, the, the problem of uh, some tensions or or contradictions between science and, and theology. They read some of my books on that topic and we discussed about that and they told me that we are not interested really in such conflicts. Uh -huh. we, because, why? Because God is infinite, so it transcends infinitely our possibilities. It would be uh, impossible if there were no some contradictions with, in God as far as we see in Him. So if there are contradictions or tensions, that's okay, they must be. We are happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> So no. this is uh, the Eastern approach. Yes, yes. yes. yes and I'd and, like uh, to pick, pick that up. I mean, in a sense, so does logic have a theological value? I think certainly it does have a value. But at some point, it somehow loses contact with the original theological problems and kind of goes on to maybe to high, high formal level or one gets fixated with some certain logic. And then it has long, no longer any value. It doesn't clarify anything, but rather it obscures, obscures things. And I think this is the, the danger between working in logic proper and then going into this thing that, that Simon Weil called magic. And this is, I think, something very important. And here I think that the Eastern Church is more sound. They have yeah, sound. yeah. Well, concerning uh, logic and negative theology, just came to my mind that uh, if you if you look at those at that series of ontological proofs of the existence of God, almost all of them are in a way uh, arrogant because they are based on the assumption that we know the essence of God and that we are able to distinguish between positive properties belonging to the essence of God and those that do not. And uh, only, only the argument, back to that argument in Proslogion 3 of St. Arzam, uh, that uh, St. Anselm, Anselm is far from this arrogant. He does not presuppose that he knows the essence of God. He uh, knows that he, uh, he addresses the uh, God in such a way that there is, there is nothing greater than, you know, so that's an indirect addressing of God. Yet this argument is the only one that is logically correct. Strange enough, without the assumption of knowing the essence of God, there is no logical mistake in this argument. So that, I think that negative theology is compatible with logic, <laughs> because logic does, I don't mean any formal logic, I mean logical argu argumentation, urging. But this is one problem, because if you take para consistent logic, I mean like it is presented by Graham Priest, for example, he uh, shows or he lists or characterizes 
contradictions which are subjected to paraconsistent treatment, for example, paradoxical statements. So the same is in quantum logic, for example. However, in this case, you say something like, that, okay, God is infinite, so some concepts or categories are not uh, cannot be used to to speak about God, and for this reason we are justified justified in order to say, oh, coincidencia oppositorum, for example. But there is a problem how to distinguish normal contradictions from um, con yes. contradictions mm -hmm. at attributed to, <coughs> to God. And without doing that, we either must quite arbitrarily assume, assume that such and such concepts mm -hmm. are not applicable to God. Uh, or if, if not, we are it is a danger of petitio principi, because we say, well, this is God, our concepts are not applicable to him, so we admit paraconsistencies. Mm -hmm. However, it, it says nothing, because there are only cases. Mm -hmm. uh, cases which are uh, difficult to treat them in another way. For example, why creation must be analyzed in this way, but not by physics. Yes. By that, to create is to do something. No, no, because God is out of time, so, so he, he cannot create uh, in this way like uh, normal events, naturally created, we create artifacts are created by, by men, but it is no explanation. It is only an assumption, because we are not able to, to speak about God according to revelation, because remember that we have no direct information about God, only via revelation and assumption that this uh, revelation is divine, of course, is untestable. See, we cannot check that God said something to Moses or to someone else. It is, we believe in it, mm -hmm. but it is the only reason. So, for me as an agnostic, maybe, this is all arguments are simply uh, only justified by, by, by social facts, by, by belief, by faith. Because, for example, a very simple example, the church requires that a, I, uh, I, I should believe in revelation. Why? Because church says that I should. And why? Because the genesis of revelation of the Bible is transcendental. Look that this argument assumes what it uh, uh, intends to prove. There is no, of course, there is cap, as far as I understand, it can be the stable sign of revelation. So of course, there cannot be uh, any formal or, or non-formal proof, but the same thing is not that simple because uh, you, the church does not uh, order you to believe because the church that says that, but the process is much more complicated. There are some criteria, uh, of historical criteria, for to trust the revelation, they are not proof. And all historical arguments are always very difficult to, to, to acknowledge as full proof. But there are some some criteria which are called in, in theology preambula fidei, 
which have nothing to do with revelation. And they only, so to speak, pave a way towards... For uh, example. Yeah, yeah. For, for example. example. For example, yeah. Of course... Uh, but, no, no, but which criteria? Argue. No, which criteria? I'd like to know. For in instance, historical indirect criteria. Just, just a, a comment. Um, uh, waiting for the, the time of quick uh, reconciliation. But we have uh, yet a sort of uh, uh, reconciliation. Not, not uh, very consistent, but uh, a sort of reconciliation that. Uh, uh, show this direction. And I think this is a, this is a logic too. I don't know in what category belongs this kind of logic. And is, uh, as revelation is just the church says that we have to believe in revelation. Right? Um, revelation exists really when uh, it occurs for you. And this is uh, I think this kind of uh, inconsistent uh, reconciliation that, that show the way. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, in, in the same the same direction. You you address a, a very important uh, question to to identify or clarify in the set of contradictions uh, where are the normal contradiction, for example, I am a, and I am not a man, and so on, and some kind of uh, contradiction, which are kind of tensions, uh, and and I, I I could propose some criteria. Maybe some contradictions can be considered as uh, fruitful for theology, for example, or not normal uh, contradiction, if there exists some kind of uh, meta language at which you can produce a kind of uh, theory which reconciles uh, contradiction. For example, uh, you, you spoke about the, this problem of temporal problem or contradiction in, in theology. Well, for, for example, if, if I, I say God is not God, okay, it is... Uh, but we, we have some contradiction in, in theology and theology produces some, some meta uh, discourse, for example, at the at the point of view of God, this is a meta level, I can imagine that it transcends time, and then I can produce a rational discourse speaking about this point of view. And maybe I propose, it, it's not a solution, but I, I propose that one criteria could be some contradiction could be interesting and non normal contradiction if there exists a meta language at the level at which we have a, a theory rational in some sense, which can resolve the, the problem. It's the same thing with uh, Nicolas of Cusas, uh, who, who gave this example of a circle is a polynome, a, po uh, a polygon. No, a circle is not a polygon. But uh, th this is a contradiction. A circle is not a, is a polygon, for example. No, no, it's a contradiction. A circle is not a polygon. But <coughs> at the level of in <laughs> infinity, you can produce a language saying, yes, a circle is a polygon, which is not a circle. And you have at the yeah, sure. level a kind of reconciliation. What do you, what do you think about it? I no, think, no. just one word, there are some contradictions which could be tamed and which cannot be tamed. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. This is, and, 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 yes. Yes, of course, but you know, yeah. Yeah. But this, this, it could be the same with, with the singularities. It is maybe the, the analogy with the singularities. When you change the, the, the uh, no, uh, coordinates. coordinates, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'll co yes, just here. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, so I think what was said now is that you have this problem of, of the logic, the contradictions, and then you can build something upon it which resolves it. Now, this is one way of viewing the things. But another way to view the things is that you have the contradiction. And the contradiction is actually caused by this level already being one of these upper levels. And that the solution or the dissolution of the problem is on a more fundamental level. I mean, already when we agree to talking in this way that leads us to the contradiction, 
be doing something that we should not be doing. And the solution is not to, to build yet something upon this problem. And going deeper here yeah. does not mean more math. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, exactly, math. exactly. But, but just uh, yeah, precisely in, in, in logic, yeah. you, you can prove that you can reconcile at upper level if and only if you have something at deeper level which can be deco contradicts. This, this is kind of... Uh, uh, Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, because many paradoxes are just apparent paradoxes, and if you analyze the assumptions in a more fine-grained way, on a, on a, on a coarse-grained analysis, it appears to be a paradox. On a fine-grained analysis, the pa paradox is explained away, and there are many such cases. So I do agree with with you because, uh, uh, for instance, if I said Jan. Uh, uh, beliefs of God that uh, he does not exist so then there is a paradox of what does he believe that it does not exist if it does not exist <laughs> we cannot talk about something that does not exist but many of us <laughs> and there is no paradox of course it can easily be analyzed and uh, um, um, yeah and I now I forgot what I wanted to say some 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 comment to to you, but oh yeah, now I remembered that uh, you say that um, uh, church says that you should believe in a, a revelation. I think I agree that church does not say it. It's your free will, which assumptions you accept. If you are an atheist, you also have to accept some assumptions. You are a believer in your own assumptions. One of those assumptions is that God does not exist. Of course, the existence of God is not provable, otherwise all the churches would die away because they, they, they would lose their sons if it were provable. Then we, all the believers would believe in technology. That's nonsense. Belief is not a logical problem. It's a philosophical problem, what I do accept. Atheist does, uh, is a believer, is a dual be believer. <laughs> does believe his own assumptions. So once I accept these assumptions, for any reasons, extra logical, beyond logical, then I take the responsibility for consequences. Sure, if you accept the assumptions for being an atheist, then you take your own responsibility for, and you, you have to accept the consequences. So. That's a matter of belief. It's not a matter of ordering. <laughs> no, no, no. But I think it's, the issue is much more complicated. Everybody is educated in the culture. So uh, I was, I passed a normal Catholic education. At some point, I became unconvinced by arguments. Not my assumptions. I simply found some difficulties in accepting uh, arguments. So there are not alpari positions. Yeah. And sure. I think that this problem of uh, discussing, the, the debating, so, so there is one, one question. So, uh, but if someone will, I guess that someone I don't believe in revelation, and I am still a Catholic, so this is rather a contradictory oh, <laughs> position. Yeah. Yeah. However, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. to, to, to yeah. what you said. I knew a man who said to me, I am a Catholic because although I do not believe in Christ, I do believe in John Paul. Recently, <laughs> Fatima, <laughs> <laughs> for example. <laughs> You might, Father a, a Catholic. you might be a Catholic and <laughs> say, says, I do not believe in God, but God knows about me. <laughs> God <laughs> believes in me. <laughs> and, yeah, so, but, you know, there are two, case, two, two different situations. One, if we, if we can, of course, give a proof of con consistency of non-Euclidean geometry by building a, its model in Euclidean geometry. So it is a kind of translation. Mm -hmm. 
So this exam circle and poly polygon, polygon is yes. not convincing yeah. because mm -hmm. this, this question. However, in meta language, there are two, two possibilities. Meta language of uh, paraconsistent logic is classical mm -hmm. or not paraconsistent. So, how to translate? You must translate. Mm -hmm. These contradictions, apparent or not, from object level to meta level. Mm -hmm. But if uh, meta, meta language is paraconsistent, the problem remains. So we must go. Mm -hmm. We can prove, I don't know how it is in paraconsistent logic, that as far as the matter concerns relation between classical logic traditional and classical systems, most metallurgical important theorems are not provable in non-classical languages, mm -hmm. even for classical mm -hmm. systems. But in this sense, classical logic is distinguished. I don't know how it is in for a consistent logic, I suspect that the situation is the same. For example, yesterday I had Father Borewski spoke about wisdom in, in the biblical wisdom that uh, one claim that God is nothing, but next claim was God is everything. What some theologians is admissible. However, how to translate this into into a no, correct logical language. You know, of course, you can say, well, this is a paraconsistent uh, example of paraconsistence. Yes, however, well, probably it is just a metaphor. Yeah. Okay, so, but uh, this is another, yes, so the metaphorization of theological language is, and I don't know how to finish this, this claim. Promising. It's impossible. <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> okay, so I agree. I agree with you. Absolutely so. And I am very, very happy. Seems so. Yes, I mean, I'd like to return to the paradoxes once more. Uh, so, you have the paradox, or you have this, this uh, everything and nothing that Professor Wolensky mentioned. Um, or you have some other paradox. No, and then we had on the one hand, the, the kind of building the roof on top of it, or digging the basement to, to somehow remove the paradox. But there are two two uh, two differences, or a difference here, which is very important. On the one hand, is that you take the paradox seriously, and you solve it either by going up or by going down. But what I wanted to say is more that if you go <laughs> solve it at, at the foundation, level. you can't take it seriously anymore. And that relates to what Professor Wolensky said about the culture that you are cultivated in. So very often these paradoxes need to be solved by uh, sorting them out at a very basic level, non-mathematical level. And then you cannot any longer take them seriously. And I think this, of course, one cannot cheat. As long as one takes the paradox seriously, it is a problem for oneself. But working on this might require something else than, than formal logical work. Mm -hmm. I think uh, uh, there are um, more than one concept of reconciliation. Uh, uh, the reconciliation of, uh, that, that preserve the contradiction. But contradiction. Uh, uh, connect with the uh, uh, an entity of higher level of complexity. And the uh, well, living system uh, function according to this model. And I, I think this is, this is uh, the idea of, of coordinates in category. I think this, this is a, a sort of reconciliation as community. And I think it's not necessary to eliminate contradiction. So as to conserve this contradiction to avoid a sort of monism. So the Russian, the Russian theology, yeah. <laughs> yeah.
yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But if I may, just a note again that uh, it does not have to be a metaphor that God is nothing and God is everything, because uh, you, you might generate uh, almost infinite number of such paradoxes. I might say, for instance, uh, Jan is skillful and Jan is completely unskillful. With respect to something. Second is yeah, true. sure. And, <laughs> so, and that's the way I, you understand this. So I don't see any paradox there. <laughs> you know. Which I would like to say about uh, this contradiction mm, between nothing or everything and the other such uh, concepts. Uh, I think that. Mm, we we mm, talk about we talk in theology we talk about our model we try to uh, translate to mm, our our experiences our mm, and, uh, experiences other people to the to this model uh, to uh, to dress in in uh, concepts etc and. Uh, uh, the problem of and the problem of uh, true, the problem of contradiction, not contradiction, is uh, is is, uh, is uh, uh, the problem of uh, relation between our uh, sentences, our our language, our interpretation, and this model which we uh, build, which we build. Uh, for example, everything and nothing, everything and nothing. The, when we uh, when we mm, uh, use this this concept to the man, it is uh, contradict. It, it is contradiction. It is contradiction. But uh, when we uh, use it to the God, it isn't contradiction. Why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> no. Uh, the, there is very, 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 Why? There is very. There is very. Uh, other situations uh, where the, there is the same situation when <laughs> uh, night and no, uh, night and day. Uh, d- 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 this concept is contradic- is con- contradic- contradictory. One, one, one contradictory, but in the, in 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 this, in this uh, uh, some situation, but the other is isn't the part of uh, of the uh, bigger bigger whole and it, it, it's, it is all correct uh, and so I think that it is uh, a perspective model in which we uh, treat such concept is uh, is uh, so you want to say that uh, God is nothing from one point point of view and everything from another point of view yes well then okay no I agree that you can you can say that and if you, you can advance even more analogies that from, you know, for li- limited human mind, <coughs> God is nothing because you, you cannot conceive him. And for this reason, he is everything. Because he transcends all description. God is anonymous and God is poly, polynom, polynom. Okay, so there are several <laughs> such cases, however, you, you still must have a, 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 some theory which, which justify this, uh, this way of speaking, uh, independently of such explanation. And usually such theories are available in cases where strange situations arise. For example, in quantum mechanics. For for a classical physicist, uh, it was something contradictory that we cannot measure position and momentum. However, this is a uh, 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 even Planck was, I, I have nothing to do with that. The same Lawrence, people contributed to the development of these theories. So, but then the situation was clarified. So, either we admit mystery and continue in mystery over all levels, 
which is for, for me not accessible for many reasons, but I admit that some people can be satisfied with this situation. Okay, but there is a taste. The quantum mechanics and momentum and the position of remind me a story just for to distract them, but it's related somehow to, to our uh, discussion. Uh, namely, we had a discussion about creation with physicists, and one of them uh, proposed a very nice theory how to explain creation. Because in the quantum field theory, uh, emptiness or nothingness is unstable because of the Heisenberg principle. <laughs> uh, because zero level is a precise level, it is excluded by the Heisenberg principle. So the, the, the void, the, the nothingness is unstable. So, so he said, all the eternity, God just prevented uh, nothingness from from exploding, <laughs> and, uh, and there was nothing. And at a certain moment, God gets tired with this action, and he stopped doing that. And in that moment, nothing exploded into the universe. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I believe that <coughs> this discussion was slowly come to an end. So let me offer at the very end... Perhaps not to then. We can continue that. <coughs> like the table. But, time. but, but time. If, you, if you allow me, I would like to offer at the very end a, a, a theological argument. This is my first uh, attempt in theology, so please <laughs> forgive me. Uh, because if, I'm paraphrasing boldly here, but, uh, but Father Professor Szczurek told that uh, uh, it's uh, a passage from the Bible that God speaks to us in a way which must be understandable to us. And I think there are, loosely speaking, two, co two cor corollaries which follow from this. That first, it must be logical, so logic in theology is indispensable. But secondly, it cannot be the classical logic. Why? There is a, a, a useful but also a rough distinction between uh, logics from the God's eyes perspective, let's say, and the logics for an imperfect agent, a an agent which has no full access to information, uh, an agent who uh, must reason in the case of contra so, so contradicting. So uh, yeah, and uh, it seems that the classical logic is a, a logic from the God's eyes perspective. And some, some other logics, maybe some incarnations of the paraconsistent logic, or uh, some non-monotonic logics, are logics from the imperfect agent's perspective. So the question is whether it is acceptable for a theologian to say uh, that the logic to be used in theology, because of what God says to us and in which way he does, that uh, cannot be, at least globally, a classic, the classical logic. That's a provocative question. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so God can use a global classic logic, and we resource bounded agents have just fragments of logics of something that we aim to keep consistent. <laughs> but, but maybe there is a problem to identify s simply. Uh, God's thought with, <laughs> with classical logic in, in, in our sense, because I mean, yeah, we, we human <laughs> are defining what classical logic, logic is. is and God's logic. Maybe there is a problem, maybe there is something in classical logic which is transcendent also by, yeah. by God. Sure. We, we, we have not to be too arrogant. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't and say so that God's logic is classical, it's logic universal with, uh, or global, something like yeah. that, but mm -hmm. we don't know which one is it. Yeah, it's exactly that, because, uh, because uh, the, the, the classical logic we use, we now use, uh, is, is, a, is a just a singular case of such a global <coughs> meta-logic, or how, uh, how, uh, how uh, yeah. you can put it the uh, name. Um, so, uh, there's, uh, for example, the, 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 there is a question, a theological question, uh, by, I'm using here yeah, analogy, Bec uh, the question is if God is, is, is um, uh, no, masculine or, or not, no. It can be, it, it, uh, so God is over all that, uh, that yes. distinction. Dis distinction. 
because otherwise he couldn't create uh, uh, <laughs> no man or women. So if, if we if we had we we discover a, a para consistent logic, it means that there, there is a logic, there is a logic that contains all the, those logics. Mm -hmm. If the if if the, if, if these logics sense. are true or, or mm -hmm. some, somehow true. Metallurgically, it is impossible, unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> I had once a crazy idea, perhaps it's a good place to, uh, at the end of our discussion to say something about that. Namely, in mathematics there was a great revolution, and also as far as it was in, 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 applied to physics, the transition from the linear mathematics to non-linear mathematics. Uh, with linear mathematics, this everything is relatively simple, to solve the equation is just uh, usual stuff, but uh, uh, linear mathematics is sterile. sterile. Uh, we cannot produce, it cannot produce some more complex structures. And so we know that uh, mathematics which, which acts in the real universe is highly non-linear. Um, and um, my intuition was that we are, all logics we have are in a sense linear. <laughs> And the question was, is it possible to, to, to create an, something like, in quotes, non-linear logic? Mm -hmm. uh, a typical example of non-linearity is a closed, almost closed loop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, we exclude loops in, in logic because it's contradiction. <laughs> so uh, perhaps if we speak about uh, God-like logic, it, 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 it is some, some sort of, of non-linearity in reasoning. Uh, you know, I, well, this is, I said, crazy idea, but uh, I think... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also uh, a research project. I think that loop is not contradiction. Never mind. Yes, a lot of yes, not because uh, it should loop, should computer program. Well, we use loops everywhere. A lot of things uh, are probably it impossible, but it is quite possible to finish this discussion. I would like to finish it uh, by mm -hmm. saying that I thank you warmly, all the participants. For, thank you for coming here and contributing to the discussion. We hope to publish all the papers uh, in the near future uh, with the Copernicus Center Press. And I would also like to say that uh, we discussed with Michael Heller and Dominic Lambert the possibility of organizing two further confer conferences on logic uh, and theology, one in Krakow, the other in Namir. Uh, the idea is to uh, concentrate on some particular problems such as the proofs of God's existence or the problem of once um, again? Once again. <laughs> <laughs> once again. <laughs> but maybe from uh, a different perspective. Or the logic or the, of the Trinity. Or the problem of logic in theology, or theology of logic, and so on. Theology of logic. We have a philosophy of mathematics. Yes. Yeah, it could be also the. The theology of logic, and, and I think that is that is interesting because the logos is incarnated. Yes, yes. So uh, uh, there is some hope that, yes, that so we will continue our discussions in the future. Thank you again. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you.